Welcome to another edition of Clock Talk with Dr. Greg Brennan. Greg, how are you today? Fantastic, Jim. Great. Well, in about five seconds, we are going to talk about wellness and all things being well. So first question, um, what are the best practices in maintaining a healthy lifestyle? We talk a lot about hearing this word wellness these days. So from your perspective, an optimal bios perspective, describe what that is and then let's get into the best practice piece. Fantastic. We're going to go over these things. These, each of those could be a, a whole show on their own. Maybe in the future they will be. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. There are five things we must do to be healthy. Number one is sleep. Number two is eat. Number three is to exercise. Number four is to remove stress. And number five is to replace what you lost. But here's the catch 22. The last one allows the other four to occur by having the right fuel this all occur. So I'm going to spend time on each of those in a moment. All right. Do you want to go to your diagram now or do you want to? Go to the, uh, to the diagrams right here. So there is this how to stay healthy. Sleep, eat, exercise, remove stress, replace your body. We talked about that. I'm going to go over sleep now. Sleep is the most important thing we must do. It's, it's a time when the body heals itself. I'm going to go over there. There's two groups of type of sleep. There's the non-REM sleep and the REM sleep. REM uh, sleep and non-REM sleep are both in different stages. So you have the non-REM is actually has, depends how you look at it, four stages or three subgroups of N. And one is stage one. And that's when your body has these things called theta waves. When we're awake, we have what's called alpha waves. A stage two or N2 is when they, there's more, uh, there's more theta, but this thing called spindly and K complex are occurring. And then stages three and four are grouped under N3. This is the most important part of sleep. This is the N, uh, N3, which is the delta waves. Delta waves want to get the deep sleep. And what occurs in deep sleep is really important. It's when your brain actually cleans out all these bad proteins are called the guile lymphatic system of the brain gets all these misshaping proteins out. It's when you actually have memory. This is when your body heals itself. It's when growth hormone is made. That's what's crucial before bed to have these types of, this, these cycles go important. And then the fourth stage is, um, a not a part of the stage is called REM cycle. REM, if you look at the waves, it's actually alpha is like you're awake. So when you put that together, those are 90 minutes and they're broken down to roughly four to six cycles. The, N1 is five, uh, 5%. The next stage is about 20%. Stage three and four is about 40%. And then the REM sleep is 25%. But this cycle is crucially important. Total about seven after eight hours because you got to have the growth hormone and clean out these proteins. Very, very important. So how long does the, is it 90 minutes you mentioned before? Per cycle, four to six cycles per night. Okay. Um, so what about the individual who goes to sleep Quickly, you know, 10 o'clock at night, let's say. Um, and, but probably has REM till about two and he wakes up. That's the problem again, because- Hold on. And then he goes back to sleep around 2.30 and then he REMs till five. Is that good or bad? Uh, as long as you have your four to six cycles is okay. Cause you can wake up in that. Cause when you start waking up, you have your, remember REM has alpha, almost like the wake stage. So that is a, a quasi awake aspect of it. But the problem is you've got to have that, you've got to have that deep sleep within it. It depends how long your deep sleep is. Those aura rings, things like that can actually look at that. Okay. So but I can't stress the deepness of it. And, but being awoken in a non-REM state is the worst. I was an OBGYN for years. My sleep was garbage. So it is, that's not healthy over time. Do OBGYNs tend to live long though? No. They don't? No. It's one of the lowest things, but that's why I'm off of bio now. <laughs> Um, next right. thing is, is eat, Jim. And this is going to, why do we eat? Survival, energy, growth. Um, but, but it's so much more complex than that. I'm going to tie that together with the third one, exercise. So we have these macromolecules, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. The energy part of that is important. In our body, we make this thing called ATP. Consider that the currency of our body. This is dollar bills. So you need as many ATPs as possible to actually have function. A carbohydrate, one glucose molecule, will give you two ATPs. One protein molecule through the pervade cycle will give you 40. But you don't want to use protein because that's our structure. That's our, what we're made of, muscle, bone. Fat gives us 100 per molecule. That's the most efficient one. 
But fat is so much more complex than just energy. There's, depends what you look at. You have three types of fat or four types of fat. You have white, some say yellow, brown, and beige. It, the color has to do with how much mitochondria is in it. Mitochondria is, again, the energy source. And the brown fat has more mitochondria, which has more iron, it gives it its texture. The white fat's the most prevalent. It's what leads to obesity. Uh, too much of it can lead to uh, uh, diabetes, insulin resistance. But it has a function, heat source, energy, and also insulation. Uh, brown fat is stored in the neck, or down to adrenals, the kidneys, and the back. It is the one that has it's much, it's a much smaller molecule and it has more energy release. It actually gives what's called thermogenesis. It's the, the heat production of the body prior to shivering. Very, very important. It also uses glucose and, and fat for energy, but the using of glucose is crucial because it actually fights insulin resistance and diabetes. So this is very important to understand that kind of structure. Now, why I'm bringing that together, exercise. Exercise, we'll talk, there's cardio, there's weight training, resistance training, there's high intensity interval training, uh, and there is these processes do something. So eating and exercise do something that's crucially important. We have the next slide up here. Okay. It's a, I know it's small over there, but that AMPK and uh, the mTOR, I'm going to go over those in a moment. But everything we do, AMPK is turned on when we have low energy and mTOR is turned on when we have plenty of energy. So mTOR is used to produce cells, produce protein, produce fat, produce aspects of it. An uncontrolled, maybe a theory behind cancer, we'll get that in a moment. AMPK senses when your body is low on the dollars, on low on ATP. So it does everything to stop producing, to produce more ATP. And they're intertwined. AMPK is a very strong control switch to turn off mTOR. The actual name, I'll give you the names of these. Uh, AMPK is adenosine monophosphate kinase, and mTOR is mammalian target rhabdomyosin uh, receptor. Uh, a receptor is a complex, is either complex one or complex two. The bottom line is what they do is their growth, cell prov uh, prov uh, proliferation, and survival. But again, now think about this. There's a talk to Thomas Seifel Thomas from Boston, uh, Boston uh, University. He wrote a book called Cancer and Metabolic Disease. And when he talks about, he finds that cancer cells only grow by fermentation, that using glucose for energy, the most efficient, the most inefficient one. And there, therefore, there's no when oxygen is around, your body will use fat for energy. So his theory is that you look at it as when you have high sugar levels, you're actually making the cell be more proliferative. But you look, why? Because glucose is a strong stimulant of mTOR. So mTOR being out of control may be the reason why it might be the high sugar diet. So it's very important to see that interplay. When you see this graph over here, you can actually see on the right side, the small one at the bottom, that diagram of ADKs in the middle, oxygen and glucose deprivation. Again, low energy, low ATP. They increase what's called re reactive oxygen species. That's in the mitochondria. Mitochondria is basically like a battery that pushes protons down this gradient that builds this volt differential that actually will make the ATP become it from uh, ADB to ATP. When that's, you have a high free radicals, that becomes inefficient. Then the AMPK is turned on, the master signals turn on, says, okay, stop making protein, stop making fat. Let's start utilizing fat for energy, start utilizing sugar for energy. And it turns off mTOR again. mTOR does, turns on what's called um, the mRNA transcription and translation again, that actually turns on the protein physics. That's inhibited. So in a starvation state or energy state, which is fasting. So why is that important? AMPK being higher happens in an exercise resistant lift weight that lifting and fasting mimics mimics the state in which APKs turn on, which again, increases the, increases the production of your ATPs uh, by burning off the bad fat and the bad carbohydrates. You defined some of the other acronyms a second ago, but you haven't defined ATP. What is that? Adenotriphosphate. So adenine is a, is a, is a nucleotide, uh, like DNA has adenine in it, and triphosphate means three phosphates. So that phosphate bond between that between the adenone is a very, that holds a lot of energy. So that when that's broken up, that releases the heat or the calories. 
So our body will turn AMP to ADP to ATP. ATP is the final dollar bill that goes to the cell. The cell will break that bond, releasing the energy to do the process. That's how it works. So when the body produces too much white fat, what is the body, what's the signal there? Why does that occur? Well, again, if you have too many, too much nutrients, primarily glucose, glucose is, uh, is the function of insulin is to take glucose out of the bloodstream into the cell, mainly the muscle and the liver. And it stores it in a row of glucose molecules called glycogen. When the cell gets full of glycogen, then it can't make any more the cell will die. So what happens is the cell says it's resistant on the membrane. The other function is to push it in and cause fat. So we'll store it in rows of fat. So that fatty liver, fatty pancreas is when the first sign is of high carbohydrate. So the carbohydrates cannot be stored as glycogen. It's already full. We become that. And that's stored in the white fat. That the, the, Now you have more than just for insulin insulation and more for heat. That's the problem. So you want to do is there's a protein called irisin that actually will convert white fat to brown fat to make it therefore become for thermogenesis, burn calories into lower glucose and fat. So what do sex hormones have to do with maintaining and regulating a healthy lifestyle? Well, that's number five. So let's do the four first because what sex hormones do Go back to the mTOR. If you look at the mTOR, um, that's protein synthesis. That works synergistically with testosterone. Testosterone also reads messenger RNA called transcription to translation to protein formation. That's what that does. It augments that. So in a state of starvation, a state of fasting, a state of exercise, a state where using ATPs, those things will be turned down. The key to this is the word is homostasis where you have turned on at the right time, turned off at the right time. That's a balance. And that has to do with how much nutrients coming in, not too much, not too little. And episodes, this is important, Jim, episodes of breaking down extra proteins. What I mean by extra products. In a fasting state, your body again needs energy. Sometimes it's actually eating itself called audiophagy. It sounds crazy, but if you have a hundred cells, and we'll say 40 working great and, and 60 years hanging out. That's not, that's not just a neutral. They're actually bad for the body. They will release free radicals. They will release these proteins that says it's not get working well. So in a state of, it's called a star, a starvation, non-malnourished state, the body recognizes that and they'll turn around and eat those cells there for energy and sources. So that's what that's very important. The most important one is to eat, eat, eat the mitochondria. And that's why under stressful situations, the adrenal gland is life-saving. Cortisol going up for minutes at a time, seconds at a time, is life-saving. When it's chronically, that's the problem. High uh, cortisol increases glucose, increases insulin, insulin resistance, increases diabetes, obesity, makes cells very fragile. So that's why it's important to understand the play in it. We live in a chronic stress state. We do a thing called the, the next curve here. Um, we have that one. There it is. On my bad, it's the middle there. That's a curve by getting four saliva tests. We have a curve showing insufficiency to total complete failure. Based upon that, we have treatment plans of vitamin D, adaptogens, things like that. Now, I want to tie that together with, with the fifth one replace. This all works together in a, in a beautiful symphony when the right nutrients are there with the right supplements. I like new word nutraceuticals and the right hormones. So the most important is that your, your hormones optimized and then have these supplements. Uh, vitamin D itself is not a vitamin. It is actually, it's called a seco anabolic serum, just like testosterone. It has over 3,000 functions you know about, and it actually has four known mechanisms of anti-cancer. Kind of give it vitamin K, which actually has clotting, helps with, uh, balance out calcium. Uh, the key things are probiotics, fish oil, vitamin D, uh, via a glutathione, which is actually a, a reserve to help free radicals go lower. It's one of the most important things tied together with uh, the cinnamide. We talk about MAD positive. All these things work together in this beautiful mesh to balance the cells out to be healthy. So that we can have the right nutrients, the right supplements at the time to grow. We need to grow 
to reserve when you need to be reserve when you need to grow. So real quick, what does the graph look like for cortisol when you're exercising? Oh, it's great. It'd be high. It'd be like one. That's actually a state of high high cortisol when you're exercising, and it goes back down under that stress. You want cortisol high under stress. Right. You want it to drop down the stress goes away. Excellent. 10 seconds left. Anything else you want to impart on your audience? Well, we're going to spend more time in the future on each of these. But again, sleep, eat, exercise, remove stress, and replace what you lost. That's the way we optimal. So if you can't sleep, exercise more. <laughs>